Oily skin happens when the sebaceous glands in the skin make too much sebum. Now, sebum is not entirely a bad thing. It's that waxy, oily substance that protects and hydrates your skin. It's the amount of sebum you produce which will determine if your oily skin will work for you or against you. And ironically, where your sebaceous glands are located, like behind the ear, on the face, upper chest, and back, are typically where you'll experience the most acne. So from that point of view, controlling oily skin to healthy levels should be the goal instead of getting rid of oily skin forever. In this video, we'll look at how to bring oily skin to normal levels and also talk about an oily skincare routine that actually works. So stay with me till the end. Also, real quick before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and turn the bell on to stay up to date with new weekly videos. Let's actually define our parameters. The average rate of sebum production in adults is 1 mg per 10 cm squared every 3 hours. And when rates are less than 0.5 mg per 10 cm squared every 3 hours, you'll get dry skin. When sebum production exceeds 1.5 mg every 3 hours, it's considered excessive and oily. And there are so many factors that go into how much sebum you'll produce. Men generally have higher sebum output due to higher testosterone levels, and women produce more during ovulation as a result of increased progesterone. Other risk factors are genetics, stress, cosmetics, especially if they mess with your skin pH, and of the least talked about cause, which is food. So before we get into the actual routine, let's look at seven tips to combat oily skin and prevent it because there's no point to have a routine for oily skin without knowing what these are first. The first is wash your face regularly. Don't scrub or rub your skin too hard. This can irritate it and produce more oil. You want to also avoid products that contain lots of alcohol since they can dry out the skin and make it produce even more oil. A foaming cleanser or gel would be ideal every morning, evening, and after exercise. The second is which comes to no surprise is use products that are oil-free and are non-comedogenic. This makes sure that the products won't clog the pores and affect the sebaceous glands. The third is don't ditch the moisturizer. It does seem counterintuitive though, but because parched skin produces more sebum, hydrated skin will tell your sebaceous glands to not work so hard to keep up. There are many moisturizers created specifically for oily skin that are light, fast absorbing, and won't leave your skin shiny, which we will discuss in a bit. The fourth is use a broad spectrum mineral sunscreen, preferably one with zinc oxide, as topical zinc may reduce oil production. Fifth, choose oil-free water-based makeup. Sixth, don't sleep in the makeup. And lastly, avoid touching your face throughout the day. You can spread the oils on your hand onto the face, which wouldn't be good. There are other few tips as well, like eating foods lower on the glycemic index scale and reducing processed foods, which are a big contributor to oily skin. And avoid living in areas that are generally humid, like tropical climates versus dry and temperate regions. These will definitely be harder to manage, but not impossible. If that is you, then you definitely wanna pay attention to this routine. The first part of the oily skincare routine is change your pillowcase. Do this once a week. That's the first place to start. I left below the best pillowcases for oily skin in the description, so definitely check that out. The second is using a cleanser with gentle salicylic acid. I would recommend 0.5% salicylic acid as 2% ones can be a little harsh for some people. Go with 0.5% if that's you. A good one that cleanses without irritation is the Paul's Choice Pore Normalizing Cleanser at 0.5% and is great at removing excess oil. And it's up to you if you want to do the double cleanse method, but this will largely depend on how much sebum you produce. More, more info on double cleansing in this video here. Thirdly, a non-alcoholic toner, which helps reduce the appearance of the pores and tightens the skin. Not all toners are the same, so be careful with which one that you're using. The one I would go with is the Elta MD Skin Recovery Essence Toner, since it is pH balanced. Sometimes toners become necessary when you live in an area with hard water as they can counteract the alkalinity of the hard water. So if that's you and you think your water is bad, then try considering a toner. Fourthly, a niacinamide serum. 
This will decrease pores and oil on the skin, preferably if it has zinc PCA combined with it as it regulates sebum production. One that a lot of people like is the Naturium one that has 12% niacinamide, 2% zinc PCA, hyaluronic acid, and vitamin E, which can help reduce the look of large pores too. Interestingly, even formulations of 2% niacinamide may be effective in lowering the sebum excretion rate in Japanese individuals and causal sebum levels in Caucasian individuals, which I thought was interesting. Fifthly, the next step would be to use a moisturizer that has mattifying properties. The Effaclar Matte by LRP is a good option since it's anti-shine and uses a lipohydroxy acid, which also has skin renewing properties. Oily skin is often a sign of dehydrated skin, right? That's when your skin tries to compensate by producing more oils and goes a little overboard. This moisturizer helps combat that. And lastly, top it all off with an oil-free sunscreen. A broad spectrum one SPF of at least 40 or more that has 9% zinc oxide and doesn't leave a white cast is the one by Elta MD UV Clear. Everyone loves this one because it's non-greasy and I personally use this one currently as it works amazingly. So those are usually the six steps. In addition to this, you can add a clay mask that has mattifying properties too, at least once a week. A mask that has both kaolin and bentonite clay that seems to work is the Cetaphil Derma Control Purifying Clay Mask as it's gentle and effective. And since washing your face in the middle of the day isn't always possible and you're on the go, blotting paper like this one by Tatcha that has a back of leaf is a good idea to keep with you as they absorb excess oil to help give your skin a more matte finish throughout the day. In the end, you can't entirely turn off your sebaceous glands, but for the most part, you can control the symptoms of oily skin with the right skincare routine. And keep in mind, this process won't be an overnight fix either. Wait at least several weeks to see the results. Following the steps I gave you though, as well as some lifestyle changes, like controlling stress and managing what you eat, will help keep oily skin under control in the long run. But it does take some patience. I'm more curious to hear from you guys though. What are your thoughts on this oily skincare routine? Would you add anything else to it? Subtract something? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you found this video useful and I'll see you guys on the next one.